Now at 5 a.m., Lexington police arrested a man. They say shot his wife in their home while their son was there. We're tracking the latest on a deadly crash in Jessamine County. The details plus what you can expect for today's busy Labor Day travel day. And UK police investigating a drone crash at Commonwealth Stadium over the weekend. Now police deciding whether or not to file charges. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning and welcome into you. Hope you're having a great start to your holiday weekend, or actually the end of the weekend, but the start of the holiday here on this Labor Day. I'm Rebecca Smith. Hope it's a good one. Let's get a look at what the weather has in store with meteorologist Micah Harris. Yeah, and it looks pretty calm and quiet out in about and for your start of the Labor Day. Now, in toward the afternoon, I can't say it's going to finish that way because we do have a slight chance of rain. But outside at this very moment, it's pretty quiet. We're sitting there in the 60s, and we'll hold on to those 60s for the next several hours, or a few hours, until that sun does rise. And once it does, it's going to be another scorcher in store. 90 degrees in the forecast for today. Slight chance of rain. We'll really get into that midweek forecast, because that's when we'll start to see some huge changes. And I'll have all that coming up in about 10 minutes. Well, friends and family members remembering the victims of a deadly crash in Jessamine County. That crash happened around 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon on U.S. 27 near the Dish Barn in Nicholasville. It comes on Labor Day weekend, of course, the busiest weekend for traffic in the United States. WKOT's Mark Barber is live on I-75 this morning with details on the crash and what we as drivers can expect on the roads today. Good morning, Rebecca. That's right. Today is one of the most highly traveled and one of the most dangerous days on the road each year. Last Labor Day, state police say that they had six people die from alcohol related deaths on the road, and they say they arrested 55 others for DUI. State police are now hoping to see those numbers fall this Labor Day. Already this weekend, two people have died, and three others have been rushed to the hospital in critical condition. That crash happened on Nicholasville Road in Jesmond County yesterday afternoon. Investigators say the driver of a Ford Explorer drove into an oncoming traffic and slammed into a pickup truck. Both drivers were killed. The coroner has not released the name of the person driving the Explorer yet, but he has identified the driver of the truck as 28 year old Rusty Johnson. Three other people who were in his truck were all seriously hurt. Now, investigators have not said what caused that crash yet, but state police are hoping to stop other crashes like it from happening today. In order to do that, troopers say they need to increase their patrols. They say they are now closely watching for impaired drivers and they are setting up safety checkpoints across the state. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Well, new this morning, Lexington police say a man was arrested after he shot his wife overnight. This happened at a home on Little Pigeon Court just before one this morning. A woman told police her husband shot her in the knee after an argument. Police say the couple's 10 year old son was home at the time. The woman was taken to UK hospital with non life threatening injuries. Police later caught up to the suspect on New Circle near the Toyota dealership. They say he's charged with second degree assault but could face more charges. New this morning, Lexington police investigating after they say two men drove up to a bar and started shooting. This happened on Alexandria around 1 this morning. Officers say managers at a bar kicked a couple of people out earlier that night. They say they would be back a little bit later. That's according to the bar owners there. Two men pulled up in a white SUV, banged on the door, went to the back to their car and started firing. No one was hurt, but officers say the suspect shot out the windows at the bar. No arrests were made. Also new this morning, two men were arrested for breaking into someone's home and stealing medication and electronics. Police arrested 20-year-old William Johnston and 43-year-old Mark Dillon yesterday afternoon. According to arrest citations, Dillon and Johnston broke into an apartment on Kennedy Ridge Boulevard. They unscrewed a TV off the wall and stole medication. After they were arrested, police say they admitted to the crime. They're set to be arraigned tomorrow. Lexington police made an arrest in a weekend shooting. Early Sunday morning, officers found a man shot in the leg in a parking lot at 900, uh, the 900 block there of Winchester Road. They said the gun shot wound was non life threatening. And a short time later, officers took a man into custody in connection to the shooting. They're charging 20 year old Antonio DeWayne Simpson with wanton endangerment, receiving stolen property, and possession of a handgun by a felon. Well, over the weekend, authorities in Texas arrested a woman in connection to the murder of a former UK student. Dallas police arrested 23 year old Crystal Cortez overnight Saturday in connection to the murder of 35 year old Dr. Kendra Hatcher. 
She's been charged with capital murder. Investigators say Cortez admitted to conspiring with someone to drive a man to rob Hatcher in exchange for $500. Cortez's family argues she either didn't know what was going on or was threatened to participate in the attempted robbery. Police do not believe Cortez was the one who shot Hatcher. She's being held on a $250,000 bond. Meanwhile, family and friends have set up a GoFundMe account for Kendra Hatcher. We have a link to that page on our website, WKYT.com. This morning, University of Kentucky police are continuing to investigate after a drone crashed into Commonwealth Stadium that delayed the game on Saturday. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is at our live desk with more on this very strange situation. Good morning. Good morning, Rebecca. University officials say this situation could have been a lot worse, and they are thankful the drone crashed in an area of the stadium that was not filled with fans. A spokesman with UK says a student was flying the drone from the parking lot when it crashed onto a deck on the suite level of the stadium. Police say it happened just a few minutes before kickoff as a sold out crowd of nearly 63,000 fans packed into the newly renovated stadium. Also, the fact the drone was flying in airspace near UK hospitals helipad caused some more concern for officials. Now this made the second drone to crash into a stadium over the past few days. On Thursday, a drone fell into an empty part of a stadium in New York during a U.S. Open tennis match. No one was injured in either instance, but it is giving more cause for concern over the fast growing but unregulated activity. UK police say they have been talking with the student who is not yet facing any charges. Investigators say they will discuss this week what steps to take next. At the live desk, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Well, supporters of a Lexington Kroger that's set to be shut down this weekend plan on holding a rally to try to keep it open. Kroger announced last week they'll shut down their Romney Road location for good on Saturday. Kroger says the store has been losing money since 2008. The group plans to hold the rally at the Romney Kroger this morning at 11. The International Foosball Championship wraps up in Lexington today. From football to foosball, it's being held at the Clarion Hotel on Newtown Pike. Players from as far away as Britain, Germany, and Ireland are in town. Lexington native Ryan Moore also competing. He is the number one ranked foosball player in the world. The tournament is free and open to the public. Maybe an interesting little way to start your Labor Day by heading out to see some foosball. WKYT this morning, just getting started. The buzz is building for the debut of a new late show. After the break, we'll hear from Stephen Colbert about his first night on network. It's all about the temperatures the next couple of days. So talking about today and toward the afternoon, we do have a slight chance of rain, but there are big changes in the forecast as we approach midweek. We'll get into that coming up next.